Hello, my friends, and welcome back to PlayStation Underground. I am joined by Tom from the Chinese Room. We are playing Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Uh, Tom, I could think of no better way to get started than to just have you take us into this game. No problem. Thank you for joining us, by the way. Oh, pleasure. Yeah. So, um, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture um, is a game about the end of the world like no other. Um, it's a, uh, an open world, story-driven mystery about the effects of a uh, earth-shattering event on regular people and how they react to this, come together and um, face, this, uh, face this adversity. So I, I, I can already tell that you're, you're, your team is going to be playing with a lot of different emotions there. I mean, it's very haunting, it's very sad. Um, there's like a lot of different push and pull, I think. Is that, is that correct? Oh, definitely. I mean, the... Um, the emotion of the story is, um, is something that we're really pushing to the forefront um, with this game and we really, uh, we really feel that the only, um, the only fail state for this game is if, um, if you come away from the game not caring about the, uh, the people and, uh, and what's happened to them. So that's, uh, okay. that's the way we view things. I really like that attitude. <laughs> so a key theme of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is discovery. and. Um, what we really want is for um, is for the player to um, to craft their own story, mm. and um, as I said before, it's an open world adventure. Um, you um, you can basically go anywhere and uncover the story in any order, in any way that um, that you want. Um, and where where are we set right now? Is this in the UK where your team is based, or is this somewhere else in the world? So. The game is set in um, a, or a fictitious uh, realm. <laughs> a well, a, it's it's a fictitious village okay. called um, Yorton. It's in um, in the uh, the British countryside okay. of Shropshire, and um, it's set in the the mid nineteen eighties. Okay, perfect. Now now my my portrait is made and I can proceed. Perfect. So, what we what we're really going for here is um, is allowing the player the freedom of choice. Um, we're not funneling the player down any particular route. Um, the story is uh, is not given to the player in, in cutscenes. Mm. Um, they're really crafting their own journey. Um, the way story is delivered to to you is um, via um, a, n a number of different um, a number of different ways. Um, one of them being um, transmissions which you'll find through various uh, electrical equipment, such as uh, radios, such as this. And you'll discover very early on in the game that um, somebody is broadcasting messages from within the, uh, from within the, the community. I've been recording the pattern for three hours, and so far I've accumulated over three megabytes of binary data. The pattern does not, at this point, seem to be part of any recognizably closed loop, but there remains symmetry, despite the conflicts. I feel like a, a really strong voice cast is going to be essential in a game like this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've, um, we've worked really, uh, really closely with, um, uh, with Sony Santa Monica, who are um, helping produce this, uh, this title. Mm. And um, yeah, we've got a really, really strong cast that um, we'll talk about a bit more at a, okay. at a later date. Perfect. And uh, spoilers for later in the episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, that's something that we'll, we'll discuss um, yeah, excellent. Uh, at a later date. Um, so. We've got the, uh, the radio transmissions. Um, we've also got um, what we call passive events. As you can see here, we've got um, these representations of characters within the game. And um, these um, you uncover just uh, by walking close to them. Um, they're called passive events. Um, and basically, these are going to give you um, bites of the story. These are fragments of um, conversations, of, of people's memories. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, it will give you a, uh, a sense of um, what happened in the, in the events leading up to this, this cataclysmic event. And I'm assuming, and of course, don't, don't tell me if you're not allowed, but I'm assuming that the very essence of this sort of ethereal interaction you're having with the characters around you, is that also explained at some point in the story? Or do you leave it, some things to the imagination? Well, 
it's um, it's something that definitely becomes apparent mm. much later in the game as mm. to to what's actually happened here. Okay. Um, it's something that we uh, we don't want to spoil for uh, sure. for the players. I'm not telling you to reveal the entire game <laughs> on the show. So, <laughs> and um, but yeah, I mean, the game is is definitely uh, has a, a, cl a clear focus on um, allowing the player to uncover this story. And the beauty of it is that no one player will have the same experience as as uh, as another. Um, You'll find um, early on in the game, there are um, events that are hinted at, slight ambiguities um, that do not become apparent unless you, um, unless you really dig and really explore and, um, and try to uncover as many of these events as, as possible. And one of the things that um, we found with, um, uh, with our previous titles, um, like Dear Esther, for example, is that um, it stimulated uh, great debate amongst, uh, amongst players. Um, as to you know what the meanings were behind the different stories mm. and the characters' motivations and uh, yeah I mean it's uh, it's really a game that the more digging that you do um, the more it uh, the more it rewards you. Phenomenal. Well, the video game community can be very passionate about uncovering things hidden within stories and within narratives. So oh, definitely. I'd say that's a safe play. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're really looking forward to um, to players getting their hands on the game and um, and some lively discussions about uh, about what's going on in our world. Yeah, here. absolutely. And I must say, you say the beauty of it was that people will be encountering all these things and having different experiences from each other. But I would like I would like to think that the beauty of it is how absolutely breathtakingly beautiful this uh, idyllic village is, made by a fairly small team. I mean. Your team is not huge. I no, say that. there's uh, there's only 15 of us in the uh, in the studio, and um, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of uh, love and passion poured into this project. Yeah, and I think it's apparent. I mean, one of the things that's been absolutely key about the um, development is authenticity of the environment, and um, I mean, there's two two key things here: is that we really tried so hard to, to create an authentic representation of Britain. Mm. Um, I mean, our, um, our co-director and um, creative uh, leader, Dan Pinchbeck, he said very early on uh, in the production that if it wasn't right and if it wasn't Britain, that we'd rip it out and start it again. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> So the, the Sony Santa pressure. Monica guys aren't going to watch this, are they? <laughs> no, I mean they might. <laughs> this isn't just being broadcast into a dead space. This is uh, this is real. So there's something very, very specific about um, about Britain. We feel. I mean, obviously, you know, our studio's based there. Right. We yeah, feel it's very part of home. We yeah, we feel very passionately about this, and it's got a very lush and. Uh, um, something really really unique you look at you look at the English countryside and you can't be anywhere else in the world and um, this is something that we really try to infuse into every corner of the uh, of the environment yeah absolutely and is it operating on a sort of cyclical day night cycle or is are certain things directed and uh, dependent on story well I don't want to go into too much detail okay, okay. Um, that's fair but nice dodge <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are there there are numerous things that affect the uh, the time of day okay. in the world, and um, yeah, we'll um, we'll definitely be uh, be you know seeing some of that. Uh, isn't it funny? Isn't it funny how gamers always want to know about time of day? <laughs> <laughs> it's such an important quality in our games. Well, I mean, it's something that um, I mean the game is built using um, CryEngine mm. um, by Crytek, and um, I mean we're working with a really really strong tool set and. Um, the uh, the technology behind the game really makes it easy for us to realise this this lush environment and um, and support effects like like the time of day as you as you mentioned yeah absolutely uh, I mean the other thing in terms of authenticity is uh, as I mentioned before the game is set in the uh, in the mid 1980s um, June 1984 to be precise mm. and um, what you what we try to do is um, I mean we've, the game isn't an exercise in nostalgia but we have tried to infuse this feel and give a, a grounding to the uh, the world and the environment, and um, you'll see that uh, it's it's been really interesting because the eighties were were known as, uh, as maybe not the the most exciting of eras, but it's been a real challenge to, um, especially for the art team, to um, come up with something that 
looks dated but also fantastic at the same time mm. and beautiful yeah. and uh, you know so there's lots of things particularly for us we're we're really looking forward to um, giving the the rest of the world and uh, everybody out there just a sort of a taste of what it was like to uh, to exist in in this time period I, l I feel like I really want to quote you on maybe not the most exciting of eras for in, in <laughs> reference to the 80s a very polite way to, to put it, I think. Well, it was a, it was a challenge. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's, it's one that I think the, uh, the team have, uh, have really grasped and, um, and delivered on, doing, making well, something And it's beautiful. beautiful. I mean, this village looks like so idyllic. It looks like a paradise, except you have this, uh, this discrepancy between this idyllic environment and the fact that some cataclysmic event has happened, and it's so achingly empty. Absolutely. And, you know, it's... Um, it's one thing that uh, you know we've really strived for is to is to make it just a beautiful space to um, to just be in to um, to give the give you pause you know time to pause and reflect and um, yeah I mean it's it was really a, a key objective of ours to uh, to just make it a beautiful place to be. So yeah, go ahead. What of what are, what we've got here is um, the uh, the third um, uh, main um, storytelling. Um, uh, mechanism here which is um, what we call a tilt event um, so what I what I have to do in order to um, to reveal the event I have to use the um, the uh, six axis function on yeah the, on the dual shot shot for it. Yeah. and uh, and tune in this event here Beautiful. Stay away from me. Don't come near me. This is people's property. You're scaring them. It's all over the village. It's gone into everything. It's so far. And as you can see, for these for these tilt events, we have gone into a, another time of day here, mm -hmm. um, just to really highlight the importance of the quarantine and adapting. Give me that bloody can. Hand it over, Appleton. No, get off. Give me the can. Give me the can. Fucking blow up. And one of the things we've, we've gone for here with these representations of um, people and the events that have happened here um, is we've, we've left it up to the player to, to imagine what these people look like. Yeah. And the more time you, um, you spend with, um, with the characters and learn about their stories, you know, very much like you're uh, you're reading a book, you um, you develop your own uh, image of what they look like. I mean, your own interpretation. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, we give the player the um, the space to be able to do that. And I, I mean, I certainly know what I think all the characters sure. look like. And uh, you have a d you have a very unique perspective of being in the development studio, though. Oh, definitely. I mean, <laughs> but it's you know, it's been a it's been a pleasure to uh, to be able to get to know these characters, yeah. and um, you know, we've really. With the with the script that um, that uh, Dan has has produced, um, you know, we I think we've got really really memorable strong characters that will stay with players, and um, you know, for those who really dig deep into the game and uh, and look for every little bit of story that they can, I think they'll find that really really rewarding. So I know that we only have a few minutes left, and so I want to make sure that you can get to everything you need to get to, but also I want to know what every PS4 owner absolutely needs to know about Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, just taking away from even this video. Um, what, we've, what we've done is we've, um, we've tried to create a game that um, will be an emotional experience, and hopefully you'll be able to take away from this, you know, you'll be able to feel the, the absolute passion that we've, we've tried to pour into the game. Um, I mean, absolutely key to this is the, um, the interplay between the story and the, the music that we've got here. Um, our, um, our other co-director and um, composer, Jessica Curry, has just produced an absolutely amazing score that has been developed in, in tandem with the story. And, um, what you've what you'll experience here is just a, a heightened sense of emotion when you um, you know when you uncover each of these um, story uh, story instances you'll hear not only the um, the beautiful music that's uh, been produced for for each of these we've gone to a lot of trouble to uh, to create a, a procedural audio system mm. that takes Jessica's music um, not only randomizes it but also pulls it apart and recombines it into something unique that every player will experience. Um, they'll have their own, um, their own uh, 
experience of, um, of it's that almost moment. Like their own personal score is being kind of composed for them as they Abs go. Absolutely, that's yeah. that's what we've uh, that's what we've tried to go for, and um, it's uh, it's something that's that's really come together fantastically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the the thing is, we we as you say, we have a, a small team, very very passionate team, and um, who I think we you know has really punched above their weight with this game. You're seeing um, you know, small scale, triple A production values here from the visuals, from the music. Mm -hmm. um, Voice acting. From mm -hmm. the acting, mm -hmm. from the, the script. Mm -hmm. And I think we're delivering um, a really, really unique experience on, on PlayStation 4. Phenomenal. Well, that was a that was like a perfect ending line. I wish we, we should have just ended there. But I will say, <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, well, it's and, a pleasure to be here. And everybody's gone to the Rapture is coming to PS4 uh, summer of 2015. Is that That's correct? That's correct. Yeah. Tom, thank you so much. Oh, pleasure. <laughs> So thank you everyone for joining us on PlayStation Underground. Again, that was Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, which is coming to PS4 in summer of 2015. Thank you so much, Tom, for coming all the way out here to be with us. And uh, I think I want you to sign our wall. How do you, what do you say about that? Perfect. <laughs> Cheers, guys.